Good morning. Good morning. Welcome this morning on January the 4th on Wednesday to Peace Through the Word, Daily Devotional Ministry of Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church and LCMS, Lutheran Church of Missouri Synod Congregation, and I'm Pastor Ron York of that congregation, welcoming you worldwide, no matter where you're chiming in to this daily devotional piece of ministry. And brothers and sisters, it is so good to be able to welcome you this morning. Thank you so much for uh, your intentionality in chiming in and joining us uh, for uh, a daily devotion to begin your day, or if you're in Europe, to put your day on the uh, downward slope. And so it, it, no matter where you are, we thank you immensely. So uh, you need to hear that. So thank you so very, very much. Arthur Fennell, good to see you chiming in from Salem, Oregon, as you always do. It's such a blessing and such a source of encouragement. So thank you, brother, very, very much. Appreciate it. Uh, this morning, we're going to be talking about a subject that uh, perhaps we find to be a, a tremendous challenge, and that is taming the tongue. And uh, the Bible has a lot <laughs> has a lot to say about the tongue. And most of it isn't good. Um, it says that uh, deadly fires are started from the tongue. And most wars are started by um, the tongue, by speech. And then it escalates. And so, uh, you know, there's a lot that the Bible says about the tongue. And as I mentioned, most of it isn't good. All right, so I pray that it's going to be something that we take to heart and that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we all work uh, towards um, taming the tongue this morning as we come together in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, Friday is the epiphany of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the epiphany means the uh, recognition of our Lord. And that transpired with the wise man as well. And so um, I, I pray that, uh, that, that the epiphany uh, will bless us as well. And so I want to open our time together this morning with a prayer emphasizing the epiphany of our Lord. So we pray. So, O oh God, by the leading of your star, you made known your only begotten Son to the Gentiles. Lead us who know you by faith to enjoy in heaven the fullness of your divine presence through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So, my brothers and sisters, this morning uh, I'm going to bring to you morning prayer, and I pray that that will strengthen you and bless you and encourage you and give you genuine real peace as well. So, O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouths will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O oh, come, let us worship him. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. So glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God in our, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. And so, my brothers and sisters, the scripture reference that our devotional is going to use to unpack for us on taming the tongue is that of St. James chapter 3, verse 8. In James, St. James was the brother of our Lord. And initially, he was not a believer. Um, in fact, he took issue with Jesus. And, and um, so initially, he was not a believer. But then, then he 
did come to faith and was a very passionate uh, believer and follower of our Lord Jesus. But he just says things, you know, he puts it right out there. And Dr. Martin Luther initially said he, he didn't want James to be a part of his Bible <laughs> because James doesn't, he doesn't play the political card and he doesn't fool around. He just puts it out right out there no matter what. So, so anyway, we have James chapter 3 verse 8 that says, no human being can tame the tongue. So let me repeat that. No human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. So it goes to, to bear what I said earlier. The Bible has a lot to say about the tongue and most of it isn't good. And no human being can tame it. We can't. That's how bad it is. All right. So let's see how our devotional unpacks this for us this morning. Here's a prayer I should say more often. Lord, put your hand over my mouth. You know, sometimes when I was a small boy and I would swear, my mother would tape my mouth shut with tape. <laughs> Maybe that's not a bad idea. You know? Because there for a while, with that tape on my mouth, I couldn't say anything. <laughs> you know? So maybe that's not a bad idea. But maybe that would be true for all of us. So we often don't use our words to speak good things, like putting the best construction on something, speaking kindly, even when we're tired, or telling others about Jesus. Instead, we speak with impatience and frustration to our families, and we talk bad about a co-worker to our friends. We swear a little here and there, we repeat rumors, at least I know I do. Sinning with our words seems so common that it may be easy to excuse. excuse. I didn't mean it. It just slipped out. I didn't say it to her face. I was just tired. It's been a long day. I think we've all used those excuses at one time or another. But our excuses don't excuse our sin. Right? It doesn't. So the book of James reminds us that these so-called little sins in our words are not little to God. We all need forgiveness for the ways we use our words so carelessly. We can be thankful that our God's word is always true and perfect. God's word points us to our Savior from sin. Jesus Christ, God's Son, and he helps us to resist the temptation to say sinful things. He sanctifies us and helps us to use our words to speak in truth, love, and patience. And see, that's why I've said so many times from the pulpit and, and, and other uh, scenarios that everything that God and Jesus Christ does in Scripture, He does for us, not for Him. So Jesus speaks the words that we should be speaking and that we don't. And He doesn't speak the words that we do. So that's where our comfort and strength is. It's all in Jesus, not in us. So we dare not look to ourselves or elevate ourselves in any way, shape, or form because that's false. Okay? So I pray that that will bless you tremendously this morning and throughout the rest of your life. So allow me to please pray. Dear God, Please tame our tongues. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow. So, O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. So blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He's come to his people and he's redeemed them. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. 
He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. <clears throat> this was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. So glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We continue to pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray the prayer our Lord taught us, the Lord's Prayer, and so together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, thank you so much for chiming in this morning to Peace of the Word. I pray that it has blessed you tremendously and uh, that uh, it's inspired you as to how God has to tame our tongues. We can't. So I pray that that will bless us tremendously. So a nice day here in southern Arizona. So I pray that you will enjoy the blessings of our Lord in abundance. And so the wheels and flaps have been retracted. And I convey to each and every one of you tremendous blue skies.